Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different. I'll be doing kind of like a Q&A and explaining how I pay my bills using the cash envelope system. Somebody had commented a really good comment on one of my videos saying that they're just not sure they understand how cash stuffing really works when they have automatic payments and also cash on hand. So I'm just going to be explaining my process on how I pay my bills using the cash envelope system. So this is what works for me. I'm in no way telling you how to budget or what to do with your money. I'm just sharing what I do and what works for me. And hopefully it helps you and it helps with any confusion that you may have. And if I don't answer your question in this video, just leave it as a comment down below and I will answer you as best I can. So if you would like to skip the first part of this video, you can totally do that because I'm going to start with kind of the little questions that I got and some of them don't really relate to cash stuffing. So the first question, I want to start a YouTube channel and I'm unsure of the setup, specifically tripod slash phone holder. So the tripod I have right now, it's like a tripod with a ring light and a phone holder attached to it. I do not recommend this one because I've had two parts on it break and I haven't figured out really a way to where it'll stand and not fall over with my phone on it because my phone, I guess, is just so heavy. It's an iPhone. It's just so heavy. It like falls to the front and I have to weigh it down with a Walmart bag and my MacBook so that it won't tip over. So, and the two parts that have broken on it, like, I just don't understand how they've broken. I take care of my stuff, so it's not like I dropped it and it broke. So, this one, I only pay, like, $50 for it, I think. But still, that's kind of expensive. But anyway, I don't recommend this one at all. I want a new one. So, you can just look on Amazon, like, a tripod and phone holder, and I will link two of the ones that I'm looking at, just the ones that I found that I kind of like. So one of them is like a tripod, a ring light, and a phone holder. And then the other one is just a phone holder. I don't think it has a ring light on it, but you can clip it to like the side of your table or desk and that's how it's set up. And then for my background, I just use a white poster board for a dollar from Walmart and it works really well. I don't have a big desk and my desk is black and I don't like it and I want a new one and I just like the look of the white background. So I just use a white poster board and in my planning videos I used to put like wallpaper on the white poster board so I had like a different background. So you could do that too. So that's what I do for my setup. What are the things you do on a free day? And this person just wanted to know a little bit more about me. but. And then I replied to them on Instagram and I was like, I, I don't really know what questions like or what things people would like to learn about me. Like, I just go blank. I have no idea. So then she asked what I like to do on a free day. So I don't really have a lot of free days. I work all day, every day, Monday through Friday. And then the weekends are usually running errands and doing chores around the house. But on a free day, I like to film videos obviously i love filming cash stuffing videos and i'm hoping to film more planner content too but other than that i like to read books so i just want to mention really quickly my current read right now which is this book it's part of the addicted series and i have these are the ones i have right now i have another one coming and the rest of the books I just haven't purchased yet, but these these books are so good. I love them so much. I almost don't want to finish them because they're just so good and I don't want to be done reading them. But I love these books so much. And this is the first one. Um, so the Addicted series, like these are the two books. And then I guess, I don't know which one this goes to, but I guess these two books are part of the Callaway Sister series. So these two series are like intertwined so the recommended reading order like there's a recommended reading order in here right here so it tells you like which books are the addicted books and which ones are the Callaway sisters books but for the best reading experience I guess you should be reading them intertwined like that which I have been doing it's so good oh my gosh I really recommend these books a lot so that's kind of something that I've never mentioned before I love reading 
And yeah, this is my current read right now. So that's what I like to do on a free day. Does your significant other carry cash and how did you get him on board with cash stuffing? So yes, my significant other does carry cash, but for work lunches, he keeps that money in his checking account because his workplace does not take cash, which I don't understand, but they just don't. So he keeps that money in his checking account but then he'll stuff his spending envelope with cash he'll use that when he knows he'll purchase something with cash but if he's like at the store and he sees something and he wants to buy it and he doesn't have his spending money on him he'll just use his debit card and he we both have a checking account buffer so he'll just use his debit card and then he'll give me the receipt so i can scan it into fetch so if you don't know what fetch rewards is it's an app where you can scan your receipts get points for that and then redeem those points for gift cards so i obviously do that like he's not scanning receipts into fetch like i do that um and then i can see how much he spent so i then pull it out of his spending envelope and then i'll put it in my wallet so i can deposit it into my account and the only reason why i deposit it into my account is so that i can transfer him that money back because i am always passing an atm on my way to work and his work is like kind of like down there there's like no atm around so i'm always the one passing an atm so i'm not gonna have him going to the atm like out of his way to do that when i'm always passing one so i'll deposit that money into my account and then send it back to him so it can like replenish his buffer since he didn't have he didn't use that cash to pay for whatever he bought and he is totally okay with doing that by the way okay like i'm not just taking his money and then keeping it in my account no like i'm sending him the money first and then i deposit it and that's just it just works like that like i wouldn't want to go to an atm out of my way either for like 20 bucks so that's how we do that and then for how did i get him on board i just introduced him to cash stuffing when i found it on youtube and i explained what it is and what it how it works and i just said can we please try it like just trust me he said okay and that he'll continue doing it if he sees results of saving so he didn't have a lot of savings and we both kind of like we got paid on friday and we were like okay we'll just keep this money in our checking account for bills and the rest of the money we can just do whatever with and that's what we were doing for like two years and we didn't have a savings nothing was growing when something came up we didn't have the money for it and it was just not ideal i am super happy to say that we have over a thousand dollars in our joint savings and our individual savings like we have our own savings and then we have a savings together they're both going up we have a sinking funds binder like right here we're saving money for categories in our lives that we we weren't doing this before so like car registration every year when you have to get your sticker for your license plate like we were just like oh i'll just pull all that money out the month before and that was just like super stressful and now we are saving up for this throughout the whole entire year because we're constantly thinking about it because we have this envelope and like pet emergency is obviously something super important so we want to have money for that and just other fun stuff like travel we're saving up like the beach too we have some money in travel and the beach and it's just growing and he really likes um the cash envelope system like obviously he's not the one stuffing the cash and doing all this um because i like to make it look all cute and i film videos for it but he is totally okay with doing this so i don't want people to think like i'm just taking his money and doing whatever with it no i'm not he's telling me where to put it but i'm the one actually putting it in here so yeah it's really worked and it's really helped for us so that's how i got him on board i just explained it to him and he thankfully said okay so the next point i want to talk about is somebody said i wonder how you stuff bills and remember to get them all back in the bank on time guys that is why i have a planner i've always been a planner and when i discovered cash stuffing i was super super excited because that's kind of like planning too so i was super excited to incorporate it into my regular planning so how do i remember to get them get all my bills back to the bank on time i use a planner so i'm gonna show you july since i'm filming this on july 1st i'm not sure when this video will go up but it's the beginning of the month so 
obviously before the beginning of the next month i want to plan for that month so for july these are cloth and paper inserts by the way they have a bills due section right here so i will just list out all of my bills the date they're due and the amount after i write all that down i go into my weekly so i'll first look okay rent is always due on the first obviously i've already paid my july 1st rent but let's think about the rent due on august 1st so if i go to the end of july because it's due on august 1st there's august okay my thing stops on july 30th so the first is literally right here so that's when i need to i want to have my rent money in my account and paid online before the first so i'm just going to go to the last week of july and i use sticky notes that's how i remember so right here i put deposit rent and pay online on july 29th just so it's like a couple days before the first and i just need to go to the atm for that to deposit that so that's how i remember and then right here you can see i put deposit money for xfinity and our car wash subscription i put that on monday because it's due on the 28th of every month those two are always due on the 28th it doesn't have to be Monday, it could be Tuesday or Wednesday, anytime before the 28th. And and then right here, I have pay car insurance, car payment, and Netflix. I put that on the 22nd because I'm going to pay my car payment. My car payment is due on the 25th, and I have to go to the teller for that. I can't just deposit that into my account. I have to go to the teller and give them like this certain slip. So the only days I can go to the teller are on Saturday mornings because both of us work Monday through Friday, all day long. The banks are closed by the time I get off work, and so I like to do it on Saturday mornings. So I put that there before it's due on the 25th. So I just look at my list of bills. Okay, when is Netflix due? When is rent due? And then I'll go in my weekly and put a sticky note telling myself to go to the ATM and pay it before it's due. So I hope that makes sense. I highly recommend a planner because I don't know how else I would remember to pay my bills. So somebody else asked, do you have a goal to end stuffing your sinking funds like $500 or do you plan to always stuff them like your beach envelope? So I'm gonna go to my beach envelope just because that's the one that they're talking about. So they're saying like, if in your beach envelope you've hit $500, do you stop stuffing it? I'm gonna say, I haven't really thought about that, but right now I'm gonna say no, because the more money I can have in this envelope, the better. Basically, my sinking funds right here, like some of them, car maintenance is obviously important. I always make sure to stuff that. Same with car registration, because that's like a bill that'll be due every year. But the other fun ones like Christmas or rainy day or the beach, we've only been stuffing them with a few dollars here and there like I put only five dollars in here for my YouTube paycheck but from our regular paychecks like we just don't have that much to work with when it comes to sinking funds so we just stuff as much as we can and that's because like especially we don't have a trip planned right now if we had a trip planned I would obviously calculate how much I need for that trip and then make that number my goal to make sure I have that money before the trip starts. But I don't like to like cap off my envelopes like that because like what if I need more money for it? And I feel like if I do have, if I have like a thousand dollars in here and I don't need that whole thousand dollars, it can just be rolled over for my next beach trip or I could move that money to a different envelope because just because it's in this envelope doesn't mean it has to stay there. So, and I know some people do like to cut off, like once they reach $500 in their envelope, they like to stop stuffing it. That's totally fine. That's your own personal preference. I, however, don't think I would do that. So that's that question. And so now I'm going to kind of explain my process of how I budget and how I pay my bills because all of my bills are automatic payments, but I do cash stuff them. So I think the main like part that this person was confused about was how do you cash stuff when you have automatic payments at the same exact time? So I'm just going to explain how I kind of work around that, how I do that. Oh yeah. And while I have my planner out before I get into that, somebody asked me, 
they said I miss your plan with me videos will you do them again and I think the okay honestly the only reason I haven't been doing them right now is because look at my planner it is just paper and pen I personally feel like that is so boring so I didn't think anybody would be interested in seeing this I am trying to grow like my minimal sticker collection and so I feel like when I have more stickers and I have all the cute things then I would start filming but if you're interested in just seeing the paper and pen definitely let me know because I can film that for you guys if that's something you want to see I personally just thought it would be a little bit boring so that's why I haven't been doing them so I just wanted to answer that quick question while I had my planner out really quickly so going into kind of how I pay my bills using the cash envelope system so this binder is my bills binder I'm not going to move my planner yet, actually, because I need that. So I have envelopes for my bills, rent, car payment, car insurance, internet, and so on. All of these are automatic payments, but I do cash stuff them. So I'm going to explain kind of step by step how I do that. So my boyfriend and I both get paid on the same Fridays biweekly, which is kind of convenient. So that kind of worked out. So somebody said, how do you combine your paychecks? to stuff your envelopes. So every Friday night after we get paid, we will both sit down and we'll budget his paycheck first and then we'll budget my paycheck. So for the bills, the amounts that we stuff like stay the same. So that is super easy. And then after the bills are done, he will tell me where he wants the rest of the, of his money to go. So he'll be like, okay, I need $50 for gas. So put that number in, $50 next to gas. Okay, I want $100 in my spending. Okay, and then we'll look at kind of like the rest of our binders and see how much money we have in our envelopes at the moment or like if we're planning something. Uh, so then he'll be like, okay, put $50 in car maintenance, put $20 in car registration, so he'll tell me all that. I'll put it in like my little Excel spreadsheet or my cash planning sheet that is that you guys have seen in my budget with me videos. And then I will budget my paycheck. So then after we're done doing that, I grab one of these teller slips and these are from the aesthetic dollar. So I'll grab one of these and like I already have one partially filled out as an example. This is just an example. So when I budget his paycheck, I have to see, like, obviously how many 100s we're going to need, how many 50s we're going to need, and so on. Then mine is, like, the same. So if he needs five 100s and I need three, I combine them, and we need eight 100s altogether. So that's $800. I'll do that for all of this. The reason why I combine our paychecks like this instead of doing two separate teller slips, like one for him and one for me is because then that's two separate like withdrawals at the bank. I don't want to do that. So after we do our budget, like budget our paycheck, if he has like a thousand dollars from his paycheck that needs to be pulled out in cash because they're going in our envelopes, he'll send me that one thousand dollars to my account and then my money will just stay in there. I will do one teller slip and then I'll go to the bank and pull all that money out. So that I'm pulling out both of ours like together rather than separately. I hope that makes sense. That is the only like time that we combine money like that. The only other time we combine money is like we have a joint savings. We have our own savings. So I have a savings account. He has his own savings account. And then we have a joint savings account together. That's the only time we combine money. He just sends me the money so that I can pull out his cash to cash stuff and my cash to cash stuff at the same time. I don't want to do like a whole bunch of transactions and withdrawals and all that. I just like to do it all together. So that's how I combine our money to stuff the envelopes. So then when I get home, I look back to his budget breakdown. And so he only had five 100s. So I'll put five 100s in this pile. The leftover three are mine. So I'll put it over here. That way they're separated and I can film a cash stuffing for his paycheck and then a cash stuffing for my paycheck because I don't like to combine it because then that's only one video for you guys every two weeks. 
So I split our paychecks and I film them separately so I can have more content out for you guys. I hope that makes sense. If you're still confused, then please leave a comment below, but I hope that makes sense. So that's just how we do it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do it like that. It's just easier for me to do it like that when I go to the bank. And the reason why he sends the money to me instead of me sending it to him for him to pull out of his account is because I can only go to the teller on Saturdays because they're closed Sundays and Monday through Friday, I can't make it to the bank because they're closed by the time I get off work. And he works on some Saturdays. So I am the one that has to go to the bank to pull them out the money out. So that's why he sends it to my account. Okay, so after we do that, I stuff the envelopes. So I'm going to go to my bills binder right here. So then after I've separated the money, I will stuff our envelopes. I film that if you guys watch my cash stuffing videos. Let's see how much I have in car payment right now. This is just an example. So I have 100, 200, 210, 215, 216, 217. This is half of our car payment. So when we get paid next, another 200 and this is 17, $216 will be put into here to make our full payment. So I'm gonna use car payment as an example. I'm gonna go back to my planner. All right, so let's look at July. Right now, as of July 1st, I have $217 in here. Our next payday is the 7th. So that is when I'll be putting the second half of car payment into this envelope. Then I'll have the whole payment. So that sits in here until the bill is due on the 25th. So before the 25th, I need to make sure to go to the teller because that's how I pay my car payment. I just, I don't deposit this into my account. I have to go to the teller to give them another slip. So I do that before the 25th because the 25th is on a Tuesday. And remember I said, I can't go to the teller unless it's on Saturday. So I will probably go on the 22nd to pay my car payment that's due on the 25th that I had stopped stuffing, the last half of it was the 7th. And I do get paid again on the 21st, but I like to make sure that all of our bills are one paycheck ahead because the 21st is cutting it real close to when it's due on the 25th. And if I didn't have a weekend here, then my payment would be late because I wouldn't have time to go to the bank, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So for all of my bills, I like to make sure we're a paycheck ahead so that I have time to go to the bank or the ATM to deposit that money. And I just also like knowing that we're a paycheck ahead just in case something happens or like whatever. I am not a month ahead on my bills, which I think some people are confused about. I am just a paycheck ahead because my bills are all automatic payments and I want to make sure I can get to the teller or the ATM on time to pay them. You don't have to do it like that if you don't want to. That's just what works for us. So then they asked, what do I do with the cash after? So bills just stay in the envelope until i need to go deposit it and then pay it my other envelopes so like my low priority sinking funds for example so household this is for like toilet paper paper towels stuff like that so i will actually use this cash i don't just swipe my card and use my buffer and then put this back in my account you could totally do that and that's perfectly fine but since i have the cash right here already I like to actually use it and some people cash stuff and put the cash in the envelope so that like for the sole purpose of the cash not being in their account because then they'll just keep swiping their debit card for other things and overspend and stuff like that. So whatever works for you, you could totally do, but we personally actually use the cash. So when I need to go to the store for household items, I'll just grab like what I think I'll need or extra and then pay for it using the actual cash instead of my card and cash stuffing is super helpful because you're categorizing parts of your life that you need money for like household health 
and you know that you have the money for it so that's why I love it and yeah you could do it any way you want whether that's just keeping the cash in here using your card anyways and then depositing later or actually using the cash but that is what I do with the cash and then for my bills they just stay in here until around like the week before I go deposit it and then my bill will automatically come out of my checking account and the money is already in there. She also said, I'm just not sure I understand how cash stuffing works when we have automatic payments on credit cards and debit cards and also cash in hand. She mentioned that she's a bartender and I think her boyfriend or her husband or fiance, I don't know, is also a bartender. They're both bartenders, so that's why they have a lot of cash on hand, but they also have automatic payments. So that cash on hand can be put into cash envelopes for whatever categories you want. Um, it can also be put into envelopes for your bills. And even though you have automatic payments on credit and debit cards, you can still use the cash envelope system. You'll just have to make sure that you go to the ATM or the bank to deposit that cash into your account before your bill is due. You can pull out cash for your automatic payments, like your bills, deposit the money when, like before the bill is due, I do it that way because if all of my bill money, if all of this money is in my account, my checking account, because they're automatic payments, I might spend this money. And that's why I like to do it this way because I have money in my envelope for car insurance. I'm not going to pull this out to go get groceries or like internet. This is for internet only. I'm not going to go pull this out to go get Starbucks. Whereas if it was in my account, I would have to remember, oh, I have... $57 in my account for internet. I have $200 in my account for car insurance. I hope I don't spend it, which is what I used to do. But back then, I didn't have as many bills. These are not my bills, by the way. This car insurance and this uh, car payment, that's my boyfriend's. I don't pay those, but I'm just using it as an example. I used to not have so many bills, and I didn't know about cash stuffing back then. But when I get paid, I only had like a $30 phone bill. And that was it, because I was 16 living at my parents' house, still in high school. So obviously, I just kept that in my account. But as I grew up and got more of my big girl bills and moved out, I need a way to categorize it. And this is how I do that. And I would rather not keep all of this money in my checking account and just like keep track of how much money, because then I might spend it. And I don't want to do that. This way, I know I have money for all of these things in their own envelope and I don't touch it it's only for that but for like my sinking funds like the fun stuff like holidays or the beach or whatever I can move these around however I want and put them in different envelopes but this video is like about my bills and stuff so each time I got a new bill so let's say like for internet when we were, my boyfriend and I were living still at our parents' house. Obviously, we didn't have an internet bill. So when we moved in together, we had to get internet. So when we got that, I made sure to have two paydays before the first bill was due. Or if I didn't have two paydays before the first bill was due, pull out extra so that I would be like a paycheck ahead on my bill because I don't want to have to pull out like the whole bill from one paycheck that's why I split my bills in half so when I get paid let's use July as an example hope you guys can see the bottom of this when I get paid on the 7th I already have money in my internet I have $54 my internet bill is 107 I have $54 when I get paid on the 7th I will put $53 in here to complete my payment for the month of July, which is due on the 28th. I do have a paycheck on the 21st. So technically I could like say I didn't have this money in here. I would pull out $54 on the 7th and then $53 on the 21st to pay my internet bill on the 28th. That totally works, that's fine. To me, that week, that's too close. Like, am I, like what if something happens? What if I don't have the money for it? What if I can't get to the ATM on time? I don't know, you know? So that's why I like to be a paycheck ahead just in case anything happens. So on the 7th when I get paid, I'm going to stuff the second half of my internet bill and it will be full. I will leave the money in here 
and then just deposit it closer to like the 28th. And then the 21st will be the first half of like the next time, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I don't wanna tell you guys that you have to budget this way because you don't. This is just my process and what I do for my bills and it works for us. So each time we got a new bill, I made sure to do that. And if you don't wanna cash stuff your bills because you're gonna have to go back to the bank or the ATM to deposit that money, that's fine. You can leave this, your bills money in your checking account. That's totally up to you. Like you could have envelopes for other expenses like health, pet care, your own spending envelopes. You can have cash envelopes for that and not your bills. That's totally fine. You don't have to cash stuff every single dollar that you make. So when people ask me like, how would I pay my student loans, my car insurance, my phone bill using this method? Well, I, I've kind of already explained that. So when you get paid, like just, if you're trying to make a budget and I'm not even going to start to tell you how to like split your paychecks and your bills and all that before they're, cause like it just confuses the crap out of me. And I've already done mine. And like when I got all these new bills, I made sure to do that step. So what I would recommend is getting a planner or just like printing a monthly view off. Like here's an example. This is from the happy planner, by the way. Um, so here's a monthly view. This is undated, but you could find a dated one or just date this. Write all of your bills down that are due. So like if rent is due on the first, you would write rent, like whatever bills are due, write them down. Then write down your paychecks when you get paid and then see what bills need to be paid with those paychecks. And if you wanna split them in half, then you're gonna to have to figure out, you're probably going to have to set aside more money until you kind of get like caught up, if that makes sense. So I dated this monthly view and I'm just gonna write my bills down for examples. So on the first we have rent, car insurance, Netflix and then Spotify on the 7th our phone well Logan's phone on the 15th uh, the 18th credit card um, the 25th car payment and the 28th, we have Xfinity and car wash. And then the 7th is a payday. And then the 21st is a payday since we get paid bi-weekly. So all you have to do really is take a monthly like this. Just look visually where your bills land and where your paydays land and plan around that. And it's honestly kind of tricky. Like I understand where people say they're confused on how they would kind of start this when they have a payday here, but their bill is due here and they like can't get ahead. So if you have a payday here and you have no money right now for your credit card due on the 18th, you would, so if your credit card is $190, you would pull out $190 from this payday plus half of it to start kind of um, splitting your paychecks in half. So if you want to split your paychecks in half, but you have no money for your credit card right now and your credit card is, okay, $190. So from here, you'd have to pull out $190 for your credit card. But then if you kind of want to get ahead and do it, split it in half, you'd have to pull out half of it, which is $80, with it. So you have the $190 to pay, but then you also have the $80 for your next payment next month. And then when you get paid on the 21st, you pull out 80. So here you have 80, and then here you have 80 to pay your credit card next month, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And like some people don't have the money to pull out that additional, which gets super, that's difficult and confusing. And honestly, like that's why I, when I first got these, got my bills, I just started it off by doing that so that I would always have two paychecks, well, technically three, before my payment is due. So just look at a monthly like this, figure it out, 
do what works for you you don't have to do what everybody else is doing you don't have to do what i'm doing but that's how i pay my bills using cash envelopes some people might think it's kind of redundant to pull out cash and then just go back and deposit it but it helps us to not spend this money and to make sure we have the money for our bills and honestly it's not redundant to me because i only go to the atm once a month for my bills and i pass an atm every day so it's not that big of a deal for me but if you have to go out of your way to go to the bank and the atm i can see how that would kind of be of a hassle to have to do that but that that's what works for me um i'm not gonna tell you guys what to do i just want to explain my process a little bit more in detail since i don't know if i've ever done that so that is how i pay my bills using the cash envelope system i hope it wasn't too confusing for you guys and if it was i apologize i'm not an expert in anything financial related whatsoever i just wanted to talk about what i do and hopefully it gives you some insight and like tips and kind of helps you figure out your situation if you're confused so of course if you have any questions just leave them down below and i will do my best to comment back to you guys thank you so much for watching this video if you stayed until the very end i really super appreciate it if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i will talk to you guys in my next video